This is the SAS I'm talking about, and I have to give a Katy Perry answer. Yes and no. It was first built on Bubble as a no-code SaaS. It does make $50 million annually, but to the best of my knowledge, not at the same time. I promise I'm not trying to mislead. I want to set the record straight on a misconception new founders often have about no-code SaaS and no-code app builders. Please watch to them. This is Dividend Finance. It was founded in 2013 to provide loans and financing options for home and commercial property owners who want to make their houses and premises more valuable. Say you want to install solar panels on your roof, but it costs more than you can afford. Dividend Finance has an app that lets you apply for solar loans by connecting you to contractors who then invoice you with one of the built-in financing options. They offer the same thing to general home improvements. Sounds like a great idea. To date, it has facilitated billions in transactions, raised hundreds of millions in equity funding, and more importantly, reach a level of tens of millions of annual revenue. The original dividend finance prototype of MVP was built on Bubble in six weeks. And to date, it is one of the, I guess you could say, darling of super successful no-code startup list. Even Bubble has mentioned them as an example of what can be built on their platform to attract investors. There's just one little issue. Dividend Finance doesn't seem to be running on Bubble anymore. I don't know when they made the switch, but right now, Dividend Finance is running on a custom stack. If you were to use Vapalizer and check out their tech stack, you'll see that a platform like Better Legal is running on Bubble, Dividend Finance doesn't. And none of these blog posts ever seem to mention that part. All they say is, no code says, Bubble, million of dollars in revenue, raise millions in equity. Not wrong, but definitely not the whole picture. They never answer a very relevant question. Is it still running on Bubble? There's one notable exception. The developers who actually helped build Dividend Finance Bubble MVP. Shout out to AirDev for keeping it real. If you read their piece on Dividend Finance until the end, you'll find it's a textbook use case of no code. Here's the important parts. The Dividend Finance founders originally went with custom coding for their MVP. They were running out of time and the MVP was still not ready. They decided to give no code a try and hired AirDev. AirDev basically treated it like any other app developer would, only they built it with Bubble, and they were done in six weeks. I'm just gonna take a quick break here to say this is what no code is for, to crank out an MVP in six weeks. Now, I don't know what AirDev charged, but I guarantee that if AirDev had used traditional coding, they would have had to charge more and taken longer. And as you can see, it succeeded. But then, what? It says that because it was built with no code, the team could iterate super fast, adding features and functions as frequently as once a week. Traditional coding, we need more time to really test things out. But with no code, I'm guessing a lot of it was already pre-tested blocks of logics. So did they just use Bubble forever? No. I'm going to read this part out from the article. This is at the end. As the company matured, it eventually hired an in-house software development team to build some of the business logics in code. For example, the Bubble application was re-engineered to integrate through API calls with the new code-based part of the application. They go into some of the function added with hard code, which I don't think is that important to mention. There are two things I do want to mention here. The first is to use the right tool for the right job. No code allowed them to launch, validate, and iterate their SaaS ideas super quick. Once they get to a certain stage, Custom code allowed them to grow and scale. The second is if you want to use a tool to its fullest potential, put it in the hands of an expert. A no-code app builder might have the potential to crank out an MVP in six weeks. If you're brand new to no-code, you're going to limit that potential. Who's gonna sound better? Great musician with a shit instrument or shit musician with a great instrument? The correct answer is great musician, great instruments. I'm confident a big part of why Dividend Finance were able to get a working MVP so fast even with no code and release weekly features is because they hired experts even for no code. Meanwhile, why do these blog posts and videos on million dollar no code startups make me a bit uncomfortable? If I was a new non-tech founder who didn't know better and it was my first time looking at no code, first time looking to use no code with all this content floating around, can you really blame me if I saw it as one plus one equals two? No code says plus bubble equals a million bucks. And to me, 
the messaging there is backward, at the risk of sounding over dramatic, potentially dangerous. Because let's say you had a guaranteed seven figure SaaS ideas. Say God whispered into your ears. It's already validated. You spelled it and you change your chain. Why on earth would you build it with no code? And even if you did build it with no code, why on earth would you build it with Bubble? King of Wender Lock-in. Of course, Bubble is gonna say, right this way, sir, into the Wender Lock-in machine you go. I'm not saying don't use Bubble. I'm saying is Bubble and no code in general the best tool for a large scale idea that's proven to be profitable? Dividend finance doesn't seem to think so. And if we look at other examples, they're not SaaS. A lot of them are platforms like marketplaces. Comet, which is the OG bubble, no code startup success story. They connect employers to IT professionals based in Europe. Founded in 2016 or 2017 on, you guessed it, bubble. In 2022, they made $47 million in revenue. And they are, you guessed it, not on bubble anymore. Hey guys, real quick. If you subscribe and give this video a like, I'll pray for you. I prayed for Argentina to win the World Cup and we all know how that turned out. Back to the video. It wouldn't be fair of me if I didn't bring up a reverse example, Better Legal. They help digitize company registration and annual compliance requirements. They started on no code, went to code once they were validated, then went back to no code. For them, it was cheaper. And compared to something like dividend finance, their requirements might have been less complex. But between dividend finance and Better Legal, this is the route that's safe for you to take. Takeaway number one, you can build a huge business with no code SaaS. I stand corrected. You can build a huge business starting with no code SaaS. Businesses grow. If your SaaS idea is a valuable idea and you can execute it well, it will grow. But at the start, you don't know whether your idea is amazing or amazingly You want to test that idea out as fast as you can and as cost effectively as you can. No code is the way. Once you've validated the idea and it starts to grow beyond what no code platforms offer, that's when it's time to hire a proper developer or an in-house team. Here's my second takeaway, and this is the one I feel might get under people's skin. Takeaway number two, even if I could build a million dollar no code SaaS on Bubble, I wouldn't. And I strongly advise you not to either. This isn't just me speaking as a developer. If I was a non-tech founder, I would be in a hurry to get out of a no code environment. Here's another Reddit thread asking for examples of seven figure SaaS built on something other than Bubble. Look at this very candid reply. I think this is a pretty accurate depiction of how most developers, including me, feel about no code app builders at this point. It's a really blunt comment and it's the second paragraph that I really resonate with, vendor lock-in. When you build your app on Bubble, you are saying yes to vendor lock-in. I think as developers, we have first-hand experience. Lots of first-hand experience with parts of our tech stack going through changes and updates and screwing with our clients' apps. So if our clients can afford it, it makes a lot of sense to go custom. And I'm not saying don't use Bubble or other no-code app builders. Use them, pay for them, they're absolutely worth it early on. Dividend Finance built their prototype in just a few weeks. There's no way they could have done that with the developer, not that fast, not that cheap. So use no code, get your prototype out there. But once it's profitable, once you think I have something here, I'm obviously biased, but I say it's time to go with a proper developer. I don't want to be known as the guy who hates bubble or no code. I actually don't want to be known as someone who loves no code. I want to be known as someone non-tech founders can trust. No code is a tool. A tool must have a purpose. If a tool becomes obsolete or there are better alternatives, the guy selling the tool isn't going to tell you. You need an experienced handyman. Not to decide for you, but to keep you informed. I would like you to watch my video on why, with all the no-code options available, I personally wouldn't use Bubble. Please subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment if you agree or disagree, and let's see if I can burst your bubble.